Days of Halloween brought to you by the Fall Horseman. I am Chris Jones of the Nerd Bliss Podcast, and I am here to give you my movie and media selections for 2021. Let's begin, shall we? For my Halloween classic, I chose Phantasm. Phantasm was released in 1979 and was directed by Don Coscorelli who is also famous for directing Beastmaster, John Dies at the End, and Baba Hotep. Phantasm was remastered for a limited theatrical release in 2016 by Bad Robot. Yes, that Bad Robot. It begins as every horror movie should, with non-exciting sex in a cemetery, which climaxes with a knife in the chest of Tommy. Who is Tommy? Doesn't matter now, does it? Welcome to Morningside Funeral Home, where Tommy's surviving friends, Reggie and Jody, are awkwardly grieving over Tommy having killed himself. Hmm. We then see Jody moving through Morningside's mausoleum to visit the resting place of his parents before Tommy's funeral. This is a scene to establish something, I think. It's here where we begin to feel the slow burn of Phantasm's fire. You see, Phantasm foregoes the traditional slashing and stabbing and focuses on the creepiness of death and all things funerary. Funeral homes, cemeteries, caskets, cremation, embalming. If the things surrounding the interment of the dead creep you out, then Phantasm will play you like a fiddle. For a little while, anyway. After our first scare from Angus Scrim as the tall man, The funeral is about to begin, sir. We see Jody's younger brother Mike hiding in the bushes during Tommy's funeral for some reason. And after the graveside service, he sees the tall man pick up Tommy's casket all by himself and sling it back into the hearse. What's up with that? I'm not going to give you the play-by-play, -play, but the takeaway from that is this. The strength of Phantasm, such as it is, are moments of pure, abstract creepiness. It's a mood piece from the 70s that will make you even more creeped out by funeral directors than you already are. Now, horror movies are supposed to scare you, make you jump in your seat, make you want to look away. It's, it's catharsis. And Phantasm does make an effort at that, but things get ridiculous pretty quickly. Wait until you see what the tall man is doing with the bodies in the funeral home. Oh, and we get this creepy grandma in one scene for no reason. Now and then her granddaughter goes to the mausoleum and walks through the mysterious black door for no reason. And what's up with the ball thing? I mean, the trailer made it look really cool, but it was really only in one scene for no reason. And then you got this whole dream within a dream thing happening. So by the time the movie's over, you don't know what's happened and what hasn't. This, this movie is terrible. Where is a table for me to flip? Why did I pick this movie? This is why I never win at Quiplash. But anyway, Phantasm is a celebratory fixation on death and funerals. And while horror movies are supposed to scare you, I don't know too many people who like to be scared that way. But if you like your corn on the macabre, give Phantasm a try. Just don't break any plans to do it. Boy! In the category of overlooked horror, I chose Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Directed by Mel Stewart and released in 1971, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is based on the children's book Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl and famously stars Gene Wilder in the titular role of Willy Wonka. Yes, my friends, this movie did have life before the meme. The reclusive Willy Wonka opens his factory and allows five children, along with their parents, to tour the factory. Unbeknownst to the children is that Wonka has set tests to see which of the children are worthy to inherit his factory and fortune. But these tests are savage. I mean, think Saw, but for children. One by one, the children get eliminated in the truest horror movie fashion. One kid nearly drowns in a river of chocolate. One girl gets thrown down a garbage chute and into an incinerator, all while Wonka is watching with sadistic glee. And his little army of helpers, the Oompa Loompas, are creepy on just about every level. And what? They're his slaves? Maybe they're just human bodies crushed down to small size and then enslaved. Oh shoot, phantasm spoiler. <laughs> Boy. But anyway, 
They have these eerily catchy songs to dirge the demise of each of Wonka's victims. Whimsical to the last. And then there's the boat ride. Are the fires of hell a-glowing? Is the grizzly reaper mowing? Is it raining? We won't Is talk about the boat ride. Folks, I am not the only one to frame this classic children's movie as a gateway horror flick. It truly does plant the seeds for torture movies like Saw and the like. But this isn't Saw. This is your grandparents' scarefest. In the category of double feature, I chose James Cameron's The Terminator from 1984 and M. Night Shyamalan's The Sixth Sense from 1999. Now I know what you're thinking. Who puts a sci-fi action movie and a suspense thriller in a double feature? I don't know. Again, this is why I lose at Quiplash. Before The Terminator, James Cameron had one directorial credit, a little-known Italian splatter film called Piranha 2 The Spawning. While not exactly a legend in the annals of horror, it does let us know that horror was on Cameron's radar. You can argue that The Terminator isn't a horror movie in the truest sense, but the influence of horror in its design cannot be denied. The plot of this iconic movie is legendary, but for the newborns out there, in a post-nuclear apocalyptic future, a defense computer AI named Skynet is on a mission to eradicate the human race. The Terminator is a machine sent back in time by Skynet to eliminate the mother of humanity's savior, Sarah Connor. That's really all you need to know. Horror legend John Carpenter was one of James Cameron's contemporaries and was a huge influence on his work. James Cameron himself once said of The Terminator, quote, All my contemporaries were doing slasher horror movies. John Carpenter was the guy I idolized the most. He made Halloween for like $30,000 or something. That was everybody's break-in dream, to do a stylish horror movie. It was a very slasher film type image, and it really was a launching pad for the story, unquote. While I feel silly for saying this for a movie that's been out so long, I would get blistered if I didn't warn you that there will be spoilers for The Sixth Sense in this segment. So if you haven't seen the movie, pause the video and go do that now. While you're doing that, I'm going to go say Haley Joel Osment in the mirror five times. I'll be right back. <coughs> Whew, glad I made it back. I almost got eaten by secondhand lions. The Sixth Sense is a story of a young boy named Cole, played by Haley Joel Osment, and a child psychologist named Malcolm Crow, played by Bruce Willis. Cut to the chase, Cole can see, hear, and interact with the ghosts of dead people, and is thus highly traumatized as a result. Malcolm Crow is coming back from having been shot by a former patient, and is there to help Cole. He encourages Cole to overcome his fear, reach out to these ghosts, and try to help them. He helps them out, and ultimately learns to come to peace with his own ability. This movie features one of the most epic twists in all of movie history. Here comes that spoiler I was warning about. I'll give you a few more seconds. The twist is so brilliant and so well concealed throughout the movie that as soon as you see it, you're going to want to watch the movie again, knowing what you know. And that is that Malcolm Crowe is in fact one of the ghosts that Cole is seeing. He actually died from that gunshot wound from his former patient. Bloody brilliant. The horror aspects of The Sixth Sense are more subtle than a slasher type film. We do see these ghosts and how they met their end, and it's definitely disturbing to see. But what's really creepy about this movie is that it really cuts to the core of our own human condition and our own fears. There are scenes in this movie that play on emotion perfectly. Just the raw emotion of grieving and loss and fear and abject terror. It is perfectly done. Every scene, every shot is important. Bruce Willis and Haley Joel Osment turn in 100% perfect performances in this movie. The cinematography is amazing, every shot is purposeful and needed. If you're looking for a movie to watch during the Halloween season, you cannot go wrong with The Sixth Sense. Even better, find some friends who haven't seen it yet and watch what happens when you get to that twist. For horror and other media, my choice is the game Bioshock by 2K Games. Do you like haunted houses? How about a haunted city? Bioshock is a first-person shooter that takes place sometime in the 1960s in the underwater city of Rapture. As you're descending into Rapture, you're given the exposition. Rapture is a city free of law and morality, which opens up opportunities for free enterprise and questionable scientific experimentation. This is important. You'll see why. Bioshock pulls pages from just about every horror movie and every horror type of movie that there is. It's ghosts. It's 
body horror. It's jump scares. It's girls in little dresses that are creepy. It is every horror movie you have ever seen rolled into a game. As the game progresses, you'll have to become part of the horror of Rapture in order to complete your objectives. You have to subject yourself to the same genetic splicing that turned the entire citizenry of Rapture into freaks and zombies. Remember those little girls in cute dresses I mentioned? Well, Bioshock presents you with a moral dilemma. You must either set these girls free from the genetic experimentation that enslaves them at a personal cost to yourself, or you can harvest them and gain more of the substance that powers your genetically spliced in abilities. Like I said before, Rapture is a city-sized haunted house. If you want to be scared, check out Bioshock. And right now, you can get it off of Steam on the cheap. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to click or treat, that's where you like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment. And if for some reason you like the sound of my voice, definitely check out my podcast, Nerd Bliss, over at nerdblisspodcast.com. I would certainly appreciate it. And be sure to check out the other videos from the Fall Horseman, where Halloween lives and fall is forever. Boy! is on a mission to eradicate the man, the influence of horror, eradicate the man. Funeral homes, cemeteries, caskets, bleh. wish I could eradicate the man. Funeral homes, cemeteries, bleh. Well, how, one shit, one shit. The plot of this, bleh. one shit, what the chid? What the chid, man? But the influence of horror on its, this, bleh. And while, and while horror, cemeteries. Don't use that one. And just remember, it was a very slasher film type. Ah, just remember. I can't remember. That's the problem. I can't remember my code now. I'm going to try that one more time. And in fact, into, uh, The Sixth Sense is a story. I am going to go and, uh, ah. Yeah, I made up wrote a bunch of stuff that over my own head. I'm gonna read this whole paragraph again. Rapture is a Rapture is a city free from law. You must either set these little girls free from the genetic from the genetic experiment.